us, but for the moment, I want to bring in Jonathan Conriquez. He's a former spokesperson for the uh, Israeli Defense Forces. Uh, Jonathan, our, our viewers certainly will recognize you from uh, the past few months of, of discussing uh, the Israeli war uh, with Hamas. But tonight, this is a, a different conflict, or at least a different side to this conflict that, that we're discussing. Uh, what do you make of that message just now from uh, the Iranian mission at the United Nations saying, all right, essentially, we, we, we fired what we were going to, and, and, and now it's over. Yes, thank you for having me. I would say uh, not quite. That's typical Iranian. The attack is very out of form and not Iranian, because they are now, for the first time, masks are off, and they've attacked Israel from sovereign Iranian soil, and they will face the consequences for their attack. The consequences, of course, will depend on how much damage is done in Israel, as your previous guests have very eloquently said. But uh, I don't think that Iran gets to say both to launch an unprecedented massive attack against Israel with more than 100 drones and ballistic missiles from various locations at Israel, and then to say, you know what, that's it. Uh, that doesn't make any sense, and I think that uh, Israel already has contingencies ready uh, in order to retaliate against Iran. And I think that we are actually on day one of a new Middle East where Israel, the U.S., and Sunni states in the region who are peace-oriented and prosperity-oriented have an opportunity here to finally address the root cause of instability, violence, and terror in the Middle East, and that is Iran. Yeah. And by Iran stepping out, yes? Sorry, I, I just wanted to ask, uh, sorry to interrupt. I, 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 wonder, I wonder if you have heard of anything happening in, in Israel tonight. We have reported that the U.S. Um, had intercepted uh, some of those drones. Those were the first wave of weapons to be fired by Iran. Um, Clarissa Ward also reported that Israel is, is telling residents of certain areas, particularly around military areas, uh, to seek uh, shelter. But have you heard of any, any, any strikes, any impacts, or any interceptions inside Israel itself? Yes, you also alluded to it uh, before when you spoke about uh, Hezbollah rockets that were fired from Lebanon towards the Golan Heights and towards the border between Israel and Lebanon. Uh, most of those incoming rockets and UAVs were intercepted, uh, and that's being looked at now. But as, unfortunately, has become the norm over the last six months, Israel is under attack from various locations simultaneously. And there were alarms and explosions in northern Israel. I am not aware of any reported damage to military or civilian facilities in the Golan Heights in Israel. And there were alarms in the south as well, uh, the area around the Gaza Strip, but no uh, reports of casualties or uh, any damages. But another night from that, pers from that uh, perspective in Israel, what is very different is, of course, that the Iranians are attacking uh, with a very large-scale attack, which we have uh, addressed here, which really is a game-changer. There is no talking this back, and there is no saying that, uh, uh, from an Iranian perspective, that we've done this now and that's it. Let's call it fits. That doesn't work. That's not uh, how uh, business in the Middle East works. And I think that we are in a watershed moment in Middle Eastern history. Yeah, it, it certainly is. Um, Iran has been very careful, I think, to telegraph, and including in this latest statement, uh, that this was this retaliation for the Israeli strike in Damascus. But no doubt, uh, Iran carrying out such a significant attack as we believe is unfolding right now, 